From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us on the new news. I'm Augusta McDonald and for Diane Parker. More than two years ago, the Estabrook brothers were shot to death in Three Forks. This week, the second trial of the man accused of killing them came to an end. MTN's Jolie Sally was in court yesterday for the verdict. We've been following this case since the beginning. Two brothers shot to death in Three Forks in 2022. I'm here at the Lawn Justice Center in Bozeman where Judge John Brown has found 25-year-old Zachary Norman guilty of one of the homicide charges. Brothers Brendan and Chase Estabrook were gunned down in the street here off 6th and Ash in Three Forks in the early morning hours of January 15th of 2022. The gunman, 25-year-old Zach Norman, went on trial in July of 2023 that resulted in a partial verdict. The jury found him guilty of tampering with or fabricating evidence, but was hung on the two charges of deliberate homicide. Lawyers for Norman claimed the shooting was in self-defense. On the night of January 14, 2022, Norman had been drinking at the Sacagawea Inn and Teasers. Norman ended up at the Frontier Bar in Three Forks, and that's where Brendan Chase and Zach Norman's story intersect. Security footage from that night shows Norman so drunk, he almost fell out of his chair. They ended up at a house party in town. Norman was asked to leave the party. He refused, and that's when a fight broke out. Someone heard one brother say no, no, no before Brendan was shot eight times. Chase took bullets to his hand, wrist, and neck, severing his jugular. Chase staggered five or six feet to where his brother lay, put his left hand on his brother, and died. All right, Mr. Norman, would you please rise? The second trial ended Thursday. Judge John Brown found Norman guilty of deliberate homicide for the death of Chase Estabrook but not guilty for the death of his brother, Brendan. I spoke with one of the prosecutors on the case, Jordan Salo, who told me because Zach and Brendan were in a physical altercation when the gun came out, she believed the judge sided with the defense on that charge, finding him not guilty. The Estabrook's mother, Kim Finn, shared a statement after the retrial saying she is happy with how the trial went. Disappointed they didn't get two guilty verdicts for her boys, but pleased that justice is being served. She went on to thank all of the detectives and prosecution for a job well done, and she respects Judge John Brown's decision. Looking toward the future, Kim says she will keep her son's memory alive and that they'll always be a part of her and never be forgotten. Norman's sentencing hearing is scheduled for July 17th. In Bozeman, Jolie Salee, MTN News. Happy Friday, everybody, and TGIF boom as we cruise on into the weekend. Our local forecast coming up. But first, what's going on across the U.S.? Your weather headlines in the Plains, mid to upper Mississippi Valley regions. We've got this active weather pattern in place. Check this out. Portions of the Plains, severe storms with heavy rain and flooding. I mean, we could see some wicked weather around Omaha. You can see that brown shaded area. That's an enhanced risk of tornado activity. It's not looking too good there, folks. The figures across that doesn't happen all the way down to Dallas where we could see some of that activity. Um, also, the Southern High Plains elevated to critical fire weather threat there. Very windy and very dry there. For our area, we do have this system passing through. We got several waves of moisture out of the Pacific, out of the Gulf. That's going to be sliding across the weekend. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a bit. Montana's primary election is coming up June 4th, and that means counties are already planning to get their volunteer election staff in place. MTN senior political reporter Jonathan Ambarian talked to two counties about the recruitment efforts. This is the time of year when election officials across Montana are working to make sure that they have the election judges they need to staff polling places for the upcoming elections. Here in Lewis and Clark County, leaders say they've seen a lot of people interested in going through election judge training this year. There are a few jobs that's critical to democracy as a job of election judge. And I thank you all for being here. On Wednesday, about 100 people were on hand for a training session in Helena, and even more took part in one the day before. I love that turnout. A lot of people that are returning, thankfully, and a lot of people that are new and interested in the process, and I'm happy to see both of those people. One of the first-time attendees was Chico Olson, who describes herself as election curious. She says she's had questions about how the election system works and decided this was a way to better understand it. If you want to make change and and 
positive change, you've got to put yourself into there. You have to get educated. You have to do the things that are not comfortable for you, and then you can start making wiser decisions based on what you get. Prospective judges got a three-hour introduction to topics like setting up a polling place, handling ballots, and helping voters through the process. Lewis and Clark County is holding two more trainings in the next week. They're optimistic they'll get to their goal for full staffing. In Broadwater County, leaders held their training event last Friday. Election Administrator Angie Paulson says they had 21 people attend. That's less than they anticipated, and she says they'll likely have another training event later. Now they'll be working to get the word out to people interested in serving as judges. It's a really exciting opportunity to serve your county and to make sure that you know from beginning to end that people's votes do count and their voices matter. I would also encourage those that have not done it before to know that I will train you. We have a lot of tools at your fingertips. If you'd like to know more about how to become an election judge, you can reach out to your county's elections office. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Thursday morning in a Billings courtroom, the first appearance of the suspect in the early February death of 28-year-old Laurel mother Cassie McCauley took place. The defendant, Amber Don Walter, entered a plea of not guilty. Court documents say Walter admitted to hitting what she believed to be a deer on January 31st, but she did not stop. She then told investigators she remembered pulling over about a mile down the road to check out damage to her vehicle, then traveled to her home in the Heights, never returning to the scene of that wreck. Cassie's mother and sister were in court and told us it was an emotional morning for their grieving family. It broke my heart, so, to be honest with you. I think a lot of the public is not aware that Cassie did not die upon impact. She succumbed to her injuries. She could have been saved. When asked about the nature of the charges, the Yellowstone County District Attorney's Office told MTN News they couldn't comment on an ongoing case. And in sports, Montana's all-class wrestling tournament will look different next year, putting an emphasis on primetime viewing. The tournament will now be held over three days instead of just two. The Montana High School Association made the change this week. The first round will be held Thursday evening in Billings, with the semifinals set for Friday evening. Here's a look at the new full schedule. Previously, the tournament started Friday morning. Now, fans will get to see the top matches three consecutive nights during the annual February event. The championships are still scheduled to start at 3 p.m. on Saturday. Two years ago, Missoula saw its first resident grizzly bears in recent memory. Now we have an update on them. First to refresh her memory, a mother and two cubs were spotted roaming the North Hills area of Missoula. Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks officials trapped the cubs, but by then the mother was nowhere to be seen, so it was assumed she had died. One of the uh, cubs at that time was euthanized due to being very sick and missing a leg. The other one was collared and relocated. It reportedly died later as well. Last summer, two male grizzlies were tracked in the Missoula area, but so far there have been no sightings this year. No, we uh, have been getting quite a few grizzly bear reports, mostly people seeing tracks or you know seeing a bear run across the road, that kind of thing. Uh, we've only had one conflict this year, and that was um, a calf depredation up in the Helmville area. But other than that, it's been quiet for um, grizzly bears. Jonkel says due to low snow and rainfall, a dry summer may kill many of the natural bear foods, forcing more bears into the urban interface. He's hoping for the best, but says he does expect a lot of bear-human conflict this fall. Coming up after this, Miller is back with another check of today's weather, plus an honor for a World War II hero. Stay with us.